Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. We'll be speaking with Mei Mei Hu in this segment. She's CEO of Vaccinity. She's going to talk about the company's approach to targeting a wide variety of chronic diseases. Uh, Vaccinity uh, aims to utilize its unique platform to bring the convenience, efficiency, and cost-effectiveness of vaccines to the treatment and prevention of chronic diseases. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Mei Mei Hu, thank you. Thank you, Neil. It's great to be here. Tell us briefly a little bit about yourself and what you're trying to accomplish at Vaccinity and what Vaccinity is trying to accomplish as a whole. Sure, I'd love to. So, you know, Vaccinity, it's the name, um, we develop vaccines for chronic diseases. I got my start in science pretty much when I was born. Uh, I I grew up in a a science household, and so we we talked about science at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and um, I kind of just grew up in the... um, in the environment. And um, lo and behold, you know, several decades later, I find myself at the helm of a a biotech company developing life-saving treatments for folks. Vaccine in particular, what does a vaccine for chronic disease mean? Well, it's teaching your body to protect itself from things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, high cholesterol, uh, and really utilizing the, the most impressive machine in the world, which is our own immune system. Um, and really making it accessible so that every person, every patient who needs it can actually get access to it uh, versus the traditional bi- biotech uh, model. So. so your vaccines are working uh, to, as you say, train your body to protect itself from some of these chronic diseases. Why hasn't this been done before? Well, um, we're not the first ones that have tried, Neil. Okay. Um, but it's not as easy as uh, one would think. You know, previous efforts, particularly in Alzheimer's space, um, they were developed by, let's say, neurologists using a vaccine approach, whereas we come at it a little bit differently. You know, we're actually vaccinologists by trade, um, looking at it from a, a slightly different angle. Over the last couple of decades, uh, our investment and our own research have really helped us crack the code to figure out how to get your body to safely develop these antibodies to treat diseases. So, you know, everyone's now familiar with vaccines because of COVID, but, you know, all that did was it trained your body to develop antibodies to neutralize COVID whenever your body was, you know, Mm -hmm. came into contact with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Our idea is to do the same thing, which is to teach your body to develop antibodies to neutralize pathogens or actually neutralize toxic proteins that are implicated in various diseases. I said that uh, you had a very unique approach with your uh, peptide platform technology. Explain how it works and its significance. So we have a fully synthetic peptide platform technology that um, is, is the basis of all of our chronic disease vaccines. And really what we do is we try to mimic um, the cell that we're trying to target, right? So just like a uh, COVID vaccine, you kind of um, in, inject or present something that looks like the COVID virus to your body, we try to present something that looks like whatever, you know, protein we're trying to target. Um, now, this isn't easy because most of chronic diseases uh, implicate something that your body produces already itself. So, you know, you might produce too much cholesterol, you might produce too much of a protein that then causes a disease, or you might not be able to produce enough of something. Um, Now, your body is trained not to attack that, because if it did, that's what autoimmune diseases are. So how do you get over that? That's where our technology comes in. And the analogy I like to use is um, we kind of put a sheep in wolf's clothing. So if you're a shepherd... Uh, and you you have a flock of sheep, you're not going to attack it, right? right? They're your sheep. But what you do is you dress the sheep up in just enough of wolf's clothing such that you give the shepherd a fright and say, like, oh, my goodness, i got to protect everyone else. I'm going to, to you know, arm up my defenses against mm-hmm. this wolf. Mm-hmm. We do the same thing. We pretend uh, to use these synthetic peptides to mimic natural biology, like a protein we want to target, but we coat it in just enough of something that looks foreign, like measles or tetanus, something that we see all the time that's invasive. Mm -hmm. And that triggers the body to say, hey, let's develop an immune response. And that's how we get the body to overcome what we call immune tolerance and develop these, you know, antibody drugs themselves. Tell me a bit about UB312, what it's indicated for and how it's significant as well. So UB312 is our vaccines for Parkinson's. And it targets a toxic protein called alpha-synuclein that's 
involved in the development of Parkinson's disease. Um, we just finished a, a phase one trial in both normal human healthy volunteers as well as Parkinson's patients. And what we do is we get the body to develop its own antibodies against this toxic protein, uh, thereby halting or even preventing the disease. And what was exciting is, you know, in our clinical trial, our first one, we showed that one, it's safe, two, that it does get the body to develop these really specific antibodies, um, and three, we show that it can actually engage this target in the CSF of Parkinson's patients. Uh, that means that, you know, our antibodies can cross the blood-brain barrier get behind into the brain and target whatever it's supposed to be targeting. That's pretty cool because as far as I know, it hasn't really been shown before. How different is your investigational vaccine for Alzheimer's from your vaccine for Parkinson's? Yeah, so the the approach is all the same, right? Okay. It's, okay. hey, it, which is let's get your body to do the work. Let's turn your body into this awesome drug factory. And by doing that, you're democratizing the ability to, to produce drugs. So, you know, one analogy might be, you know, before Uber, um, private drivers were really expensive, right? Mm -hmm. But with Uber, you turned every single person into its own driver. So in kind of the same way as like before vaccines, you know, developing antibodies and using antibodies as drugs is really expensive. Uh, it's a big process. It's very expensive. It's, you know, very limited in scale. But what we do is we turn every single person's body into that drug factory. Uh -huh which means that everyone can have access to it. Vaccines are the only thing, like they're probably the most prolific medicine in the world, right? Over 80% of the world is, is vaccinated. That means that that type of technology can get to every corner of the earth. That's what's so important about what we're doing is that we're getting good medicine, but we're getting the ability to bring it to everyone. So for Alzheimer's, you know, the approach is very similar. We teach your body, to develop its own drugs to protect itself from these toxic proteins that accumulate in your brain that cause Alzheimer's. Um, we're, we've been in the clinic several times already, so we've completed a phase one and phase two, uh, and we're, we're delighted by the results. And now we're looking to, to go into the last phase, which is to test in a large group of people um, to show that it really does slow disease. Tell us about your developmental vaccine for heart disease. That seems amazing to me that there could be a vaccine to prevent heart disease. And then give us a website where we can learn more about vaccinity. Absolutely, no. So heart disease is something, um, no pun intended, but that's near and dear to our hearts, right? So heart disease, uh, the biology, the science behind it is very well understood. You know, we know pretty much how to prevent about 80% of heart disease in the world. It's a travesty that we don't. All we have to do is keep people's cholesterol low throughout their lives so that they never get to a place where they have be, become at high risk of having a heart event. Now, how we do this today is, you know, you go into the doctor's office and you maybe, maybe you've done this before, but you get a blood test and you get a cholesterol readout. And if it's too high, your doctor may suggest that you get put on a drug like a statin to lower that cholesterol. These are great drugs, but the problem is, you know, one year out, 50% of people who are prescribed them aren't taking them huh. because it's kind of a but to take a, a pill a day when you're not feeling bad, right? You're perfectly healthy. It's not like you're struggling to breathe or anything. And so, you know, sometimes you forget to take the pill or you just don't want to, right? Or maybe you have side effects that, that make it so that it's not, doesn't feel worth it. Mm -hmm. This is where a vaccine comes in, all right? There's a mechanism called PCSK9 that if you attack it, it will also lower your cholesterol. So the idea is now take something that's more convenient for you, like a vaccine, that's easier to, to take and get. And now we vaccinate a population so that we keep everyone's cholesterol low. If we do this on an early enough basis and it's accessible enough to you know large populations, the whole idea is, for humanity's sake, you can eliminate a majority of heart disease in the world today, which is shockingly still the number one killer on the globe. We're going after something that we, we know, right, scientifically will work, but it's just a different approach. And the whole point of the different approach is to reach as many people as possible, make it as convenient as possible and as accessible as possible. You can learn more about us at our website. It's www.vaccinity.com. That's V-A-X-X-I-N-I-T-Y dot com. 
May May, I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I am I'm really looking forward to another conversation with you as uh, things develop there at Vaccinity. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with May May Hu. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at Anchor Spotify. You can also subscribe to our podcast on uh, YouTube at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 